Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today is day number five. Five is the number of grace. And I want to believe that today all grace is abounding to you and I. We are receiving grace upon grace. I'm excited about what God is doing in this fast. And I know by the time we are done, we will be in a whole different place spiritually with the Lord. And God bless you. And I'm excited you're joining in this afternoon for this time of prayer, our mid uh, midday uh, power prayer. It's indeed going to be a great time this afternoon as we get into our prayer closet this afternoon. I want to start off with a scripture in the book of Psalm chapter 14 and verse number 7. Bible says in that scripture, Oh, that the salvation of Israel shall come out of Zion. The salvation of Israel, the Lord says, must come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. God is looking forward to a church that will be the vehicle and the conduit through which God will release his salvation to the world. The church must be the, the, the tool through which God's gospel, his good news, his provision of salvation for humanity is released. And so this afternoon we are praying because a church that refuses and won't preach the gospel and evangelize has lost its essence and the purpose of its living. The purpose of the church is to preach the gospel of the good news. And you and I know, and we can tell that there are so many churches that are doing what they are doing, but the core work, which is to go into the world and preach the good news, have been put to the back burner. But this afternoon, we want to pray, beginning from our church to all churches around, that there shall be revival. The church of Jesus Christ will arise and preach the gospel of the good news. And this gospel of the good news, when preached, we are also praying that there shall be manifestation of signs, there shall be wonders, there shall be miracles, there shall be healing, there shall be deliverance, and above all, there shall be salvation. So why don't you join me this afternoon as we pray. Pray for your church. Pray for the gospel, that the gospel of Jesus Christ will come forth like the way it is supposed to come forth. Lord, this afternoon we join our faith together and we pray for the body of Christ that we shall arise and be reminded of the assignment that is upon the church. Lord, it is our prayer this afternoon that the church Beginning from our church, the local church, you've placed us in Love Legacy Chapel. We will be reminded, we shall be revived to take up the mantle, the assignment of the church, the core purpose, the reason why the church, the ecclesia, came into fruition. It is so the church will bring the good news to the lost that is out there in the world. Lord, may we not just be comfortable coming service after service in the building, enjoying just the word and the music, but may we be a people that desire and will rise to go into the community with a gospel of the kingdom so that souls shall be born again. Lord, we pray this afternoon that every single member of the ministry will be activated in their spirit, their passion, their desire, and even the burden to go into the byways and the highways, the community, the workplace, wherever you have positioned us and caused us to become the agents of salvation, agents of change, agents through which your good news will be released. For Lord, in as much as there is good news for the people out there, if there are no preachers, how shall they hear the word? Lord, we avail ourselves this afternoon as we pray to become the preachers of this good news. Lord, it is our prayer that you will use us. You will use us as the tools in your hands to bring the gospel of the good news of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the book of Mark chapter 16, a very popular scripture we all know, Mark 16, reading from verse number 15, even through 18. We all call it the Great Commission. And this is Jesus speaking. He said unto them, Mark chapter 16 from verse number 15, 
he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. He says, these signs will follow them. In my name, they will cast out demons. How are we going to cast out demons if we, go, we don't go out there and encounter people who are under demonic oppression? Bible says that creation are waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are people who are the creation of God who are crying that you and I, the sons and the daughters of God, will come out and deliver them. And they are waiting. Their prayers are waiting for us. And so the Bible says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Listen to me, child of God, this season, if the Lord prompts you to lay hands and to pray for somebody, do not hesitate. It is not your place whether the person gets healed or not. The Lord says he will confirm his word with signs and wonders. Your place is to walk in faith, lay hands on that sick situation and trust God for healing. And so today we are praying that the house of God, the church, will be a place of solution, a place for solution for all, not some. It is disappointing for people to hear the message that our God is Jehovah Rapha, only to come to the house of God and for them to live the same way they came in. They must come into the house of God. They must encounter you and receive their deliverance. They must encounter you and be healed. That is what a house of God is supposed to be. So our prayer point number two, pray that the house of God, the church, will be a place of solution for all. Father, we pray today. That the house of the Lord, the church of Jesus Christ, all of us, the body of Christ, will be the place of solution for the world's problem. Lord, may people that encounter us in this season receive solutions for their problems. Lord, we pray that people that will come into contact with us in this season, whether they come into the building, whether on social media, wherever the encounter may be, Lord, you have promised us that there shall be healing, there shall be deliverance, there shall be salvation on Mount Zion, the church of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we pray today that as the people of the world encounter us, they would encounter Jesus. As they encounter us, they would encounter healing. As they encounter us, their yokes will be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, empower the body of Christ, God, empower the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, make the house of the Lord the place for solutions, the place where people will come and receive solutions for their nagging situations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that people with all kinds of strange disease will walk into the place called church and encounter divine healing. We pray that those that are under the curse of the enemy, those that are under generational bondage and curses, their curses will be broken as they come into the house of God. We pray that those that are going through all kinds of chronic situations, it could be chronic situation of financial debt, we pray that as they come into the house of God, there shall be deliverance. They shall come into contact with a God who is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is able to heal. They will encounter the God who is Jehovah Adonai, the Lord who is able to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory, even by Christ Jesus. Our final prayer, we're looking at one more scripture in the book of Jeremiah chapter 8. It is a scripture that asks a question. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse number 22. And this is what the prophet asks. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Is there no doctor in the house of the Lord? When 
Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? Why is it that people come to church and they go by the same way they came? Is it because there is no doctor there? Is it because there is no physician there? Is it because there is no balm? Balm is symbolic of medication. Is it because there is no medication in the house of the Lord? You go to hospitals, they give you medication. You go to hospitals, there are doctors. Hallelujah. And we serve a God who is the doctor of all doctors. That is why when you are sick as a child of God, you don't allow the doctors to have the bottom line. God must be the one to have the bottom line. All the doctors, their prescription, their diagnosis is one of the lines, but the ultimate line that must be the bottom line must be God himself because he's Jehovah Rapha. And so this is our prayer. And I want you to get specific with this prayer. Mention specific. Mention salvation. Mention healing. Mention deliverance. Mention the release of health, wealth. Because there are so many people whose wealth are caught up by the enemy. It's been entangled by the enemy. And the enemy won't let go. But today, we are under the covering of the Most High. And he says, whatsoever we ask, he will do it. If we have faith and believe that he's able to do it. And so with this scripture, Bible says, is there no balm in Gilead? Of course there is. There is healing in Gilead, the church of Jesus Christ, the house of the Lord. There is balm. There is medication, divine medication. Is there no physicians? No, there is Jehovah Rapha who is above all other physicians. And today you want to pray. And so God will pray for a manifestation of your presence in the form of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Lord, may you manifest in your house that as the people come with all manner of sickness, they shall experience the balm of Gilead. They shall experience the ultimate physician, the Lord Jehovah Rapha, who is our healer. He heals us of all our diseases and all our infirmities. Lord, let there be deliverance as your people come. Let there be healing in the house of the Lord as your people show up with all manner of disease in their body, in their mind, in their soul. Let there be restoration from depression. Let there be restoration from anxiety. Let there be restoration for insomnia, all manner of disorders mentally and even in our soul. Let there be healing for your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be the manifestation of the balm of Gilead. Let there be the manifestation of the power to heal and to deliver and to set free in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, as we come into this season, may we never leave with sickness is still in our body. Lord, as we go through this season of fasting, may every sickness manifested in our body, known or unknown, let it dry up. Let it vanish. Let it disappear from our bodies, from the crown of our head, even to the sole of our feet. Lord, heal us completely. Deliver us from every form of sickness and infirmity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We thank you, God. Lord, we bless you for your presence that has been with us in this time of prayer. We thank you for your presence that is even strengthening us in this season of fasting. We thank you for your glory that is released upon us. We bless you and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. God bless you for joining in. I pray that as you continue on this path, the Lord would continue to increase the anointing over your life and His grace. I pray that this season will be a season where doors that were shut will suddenly open unto you because of your desire and determination to wait on the Lord. God bless you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, day number six. Keep on keeping on. The Lord indeed is on your side. Shalom, grace, and peace to you. Amen.